The Champions Cup is broken. I mean, we had a quarter-final team get a result like this in the league stage. How can a team lose by 82 points and still get to a quarter-final? Well, because of the weird league stage they have, which means you only need to win two games to get through. Oh, and the clear bias towards French sides by the EPCR when it came to cancel games last season. Anyway, it's clear some teams aren't taking the competition seriously. So let's see if we can fix that. So the problem seems to be the sides not trying early on in the competition. So we need a system that means you can't lose by 82 points and still progress to the next stage. But I also want to make it more of a spectacle. You guys voted on my community page that for those who voted, most of them preferred domestic rugby to the Champions Cup. So we need to change that. My first change is to make it more exclusive. It's called the Champions Cup, but this season there are 8 out of 11 English Premiership sides in it. 8 out of 11. That's 72% of the league in the Champions Cup. That's not all. I propose dropping the number of teams to 16. There will be 5 from the ERC, 5 from the Premiership, and 5 from the top 14. And if you're good at maths, you'll realize that that's only 15 teams. So where's the other team coming from, you ask? I have two proposals for that. I think either we invite the Rugby Europe Super Cup to join the rest of European club rugby and give them a spot in the Champions Cup. But I know this might be a bit unfair. They're probably nowhere near the quality of the other teams in the competition, and it may give teams in the competition an unfair advantage if drawn against them. That was me with my growing the sport hat on. The other option is the Champions Cup winners if they didn't already qualify through the league. If they did, then it goes to the Challenge Cup winner. And if they've also already qualified through the league, then it goes to the sixth place team in the league of the Champions Cup winner. So if Edinburgh won the Champions Cup this year, which they obviously will, and they also finish in the top five of the URC, and the Challenge Cup winner finished second in say the Premiership, for example, then sixth place in the URC would get the final spot. So that's how many teams I think should be in the competition. Tell me any ideas on how you think the competition could improve in the comments below. Anyway, let's move on to the format. Before the first games in December, 16 teams would get placed into an unseeded draw and will play against one other team in a two-legged knockout round of 16. The two-leg ties last season were fantastic and were some of the most fun rugby I've watched. Sitting there working out how much each team needs to win by to qualify for the next round and seeing how a team who is already ahead before the game starts approaches the game tactically was very interesting and I want to keep that in this format. The winner of the two ties would move on to a quarter final that would also have two legs that would take place in January before the Six Nations starts and then a two-leg semi-final after the Six Nations to find out which two teams would go head-to-head -head in a single match at a predetermined stadium to see who is the best in Europe and South Africa obviously. Now you might be wondering why did I go for a straight knockout competition? That's well, because the league stage is weird and kind of boring and as we discussed earlier, teams have realized that you only need to win two games to qualify for the knockouts, which is when the competition gets taken more seriously. So I thought, let's cut out the middleman and just go straight to the knockouts. And now if Montpellier lose by 82 points in a two-leg knockout tie, they wouldn't get into the next round. This also potentially makes it more prestigious, as it's not being filled up with substandard teams, and which would hopefully mean that games are more competitive. Now obviously, with less games being played, this means there are less games to show, so less TV money. But I was looking at this purely from a competitive perspective. But I would hope with games being more competitive, this could lead to more viewership per game and slowly increase how much the competition is worth to advertisers and to TV companies. But you know, I don't really understand how that world works, so I'm not really going to touch it. Reducing the number of games also helps with player welfare, as a recent report came out saying players should only be playing 30 games a season. Many teams have competed in this competition and some no longer exist. Why not find out about a previous two-time winner who may soon join these teams by watching this video right here about the rise and fall of Wasps. Thanks for watching.